Hey everyone, welcome to our little fireside chat this morning. If you're new here, I'm Emily. I'm Brian. And this is our adventure dog, Wes, who you'll see a lot of in our videos. Um, we've been loving adventures together since we started dating back in 2015. And today we've got a bit of a life update for you. A pretty big life update. Um, I posted a video about this on my personal YouTube channel, which I'll link up here if you want to take a look at that. But since I posted that video about our life update, we've gotten a lot of really great questions from people. Essentially, Brian and I have decided to step away from our careers for a little bit and pursue full-time van life. So super excited about all the possibilities and everything that we have in store. But today we just wanted to provide that update to you and also answer some really, really good questions. So I've got my notes here. The first question we got is a really good question. How are you going to afford leaving your jobs and going out on the road full time? We've worked really hard over the past decade to make this happen. We want it to happen for a really long time. We're super responsible. We don't have any debt except for the home mortgage. And then you also get... I get disability from the VA, which will definitely help us. We aren't able to naturally have kids, so that definitely helped us with our decision. We don't have to worry about college. We don't have to worry about all the medical stuff. And some people do it with kids and that's great. That's awesome. That definitely helped us make this decision. The other thing too is we're hoping to make some money with this, with YouTube. And um, we do that through Google AdSense right now. Our channel's monetized. We have a very, very small channel. So if you'd like to support us, please consider subscribing. It's totally free. It does help us and we'll hopefully keep our fuel tank fall a little bit longer. Right now it provides us enough money to buy stickers that we hand out <laughs> as much as we can. Okay, next question. Are you nervous? Are you nervous? Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course we're nervous. <laughs> we were nervous that we were making a bad decision, but after letting a few friends and family know and seeing the amount of support they gave us. Thank you was huge and so yeah at the beginning we were very nervous quitting our jobs gonna go live in a very small space we know we're going next month but we don't really have that much planned out so yeah it was it was nerve-wracking but i think we've both kind of gotten used to it and we're, we're excited now yep i'm excited i was really nervous at first especially when i gave my notice oh, that was tough um so what are you going to do with your house another really good question this is probably the most common question that we've gotten and we can say uh, with so much confidence that we're not selling our house at all we've seen so many people that have transitioned to van life and then they come back from van life and they can't buy a house because they don't have normal job they don't have savings so absolutely 100% not selling the house. We are renting it out for the next year, which is going to help a lot too. We love our house. We, we've sold before and we live in Lake Tahoe and we didn't think we'd ever get back here. So we were able to come back here. It was not easy and we'll never sell again unless we absolutely <laughs> have to, but not, in the, not, not the plan. We also like the idea of having a place to go in case of an emergency, you know, any kind of event. So having a home base is definitely important to us. Yep, absolutely. All right, next question. What made you want to pursue full-time van life? You wanna answer that one? We have a four-wheel pop-up camper, Tacoma, which, which we loved. Um, we love, still. <laughs> the original plan was to get a van and that didn't work out at the time. And then we ended up going to Iceland and renting a camper van and we drove the whole island and it really, we really loved the idea of being able to just get up and go. Oh, and there's like so much freedom, like on a completely different level. Yeah. The pop-up camper is great, but that takes work. You got your, your living space is also your storage. So with the van, you have a little bit of work to do when you get to camp or if you're going to leave, but in an emergency, I could just jump in the driver's seat and go and it's 
it's huge. Yeah, I think the other thing too was I had a really close family friend ask me, why aren't you doing this full time? And it made us think like, she's right. And she's a lot of wisdom. Like if other people can do this, why not us? So we're taking the leap. I also think a lot of it had to do with, with the limitations of like my vacation. Yeah. We were always in such a hurry and we would not, we'd go on big trips, but it was all drive time. Or we'd go through these little towns and we'd say to each other, man, I, I wish we could stop here and, you know, check out some of the shops and, or go fishing or whatever. And we'd always tell ourselves, well, we'll come back knowing full well, we probably wouldn't go back to those places. So for me, it's going to be so nice to two or three hours of driving a day and then stopping to smell the roses, to see yeah. all the stuff. Travel more slowly. What made you decide that now is the right time to do this? Is there a right time to do this? Um, we've had a rough couple of years, Emily especially. Uh, we've lost people and we've seen their retirement or their dreams get stolen from them. And I think we're both ready for a career change anyway. For me, that was, it made this decision easier. Yeah, life is just too short and unpredictable. Um, and I think that as adults, you really can get comfortable, like just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And you keep saying like, oh, someday I'll do that. But someday may never come. And so we just wanted to fully embrace the opportunity to get out and do this while we can. We're, we're fortunate that we are able to do this too, responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> this is a funny one. Are you worried about living in such a small space with no privacy and limited amenities? She's my cellmate. <laughs> there is no privacy. But no privacy. We're both fine with that. Yeah. Our toilet is like... The center of the house. The center of the house. <laughs> There's no getting around it, um, but it's also nothing new for us because we had the same situation in the four-wheel pop-up camper, so it kind of is what it is. The van is cozy, but it's comfortable. The van has everything that we need for this trip, and um, when we've gone on our longer trips in it before, I never felt like constrained or you know confined to a small space because yeah, that's where you sleep, that's where you cook, that's where you go to the bathroom. But like the outdoors is where you're living and that's what we're so excited about. So it's like you have a new backyard every single day and I can't wait for that. Yeah, I'm excited. Do you have concerns with safety? Our goal, unlike a lot of other van lifers you might see is not to camp in urban areas. Like we are not about stealth camping. We're not about pulling up in a Walmart, really. Even in camping, that may happen from time to time if we have no, no other options. But our type of camping is really getting out more on public lands. We love getting out on BLM, National Forest Service, staying at campgrounds even. And then we also signed up for Harvest Host. We're not sponsored, we don't work with Harvest Host or anything. We've never even used them before. We do have a reservation coming up, but it's a really cool, a subscription service that you sign up for and then you can stay at various wineries, breweries, farms, golf courses even throughout the entire country. I think there's over 4,000 or 6,000 different places you can stay. That seems like it's gonna be a really fun option too. And that was a one one year subscription? Yeah, it's like $150 or something like that. And all the, the host requires or asks, asks of you is to make a purchase at one of their shops or you know at their brewery. Yeah, so if you're gonna stay at a brewery, go in and buy a beer and a meal. So I don't think we'll have any problem with that. <laughs> this is also, Surprisingly, I, I was surprised. I'm surprised. This was also one of the most common questions that we got. But what do you do when you're on the road? Like, how do you how do you fill your time? I will have no trouble staying busy. I'm I'm the person known at camp is the, I'm the guy that can't sit down. I always have to tinker with something. I think a lot of my time will be spent doing maintenance, um, checking the van out. Fishing, I hope to do a lot of fishing, just exploring, hiking. 
Um, we're going to be working on the YouTube channel, yeah. which is going to be take up a lot of our time. It takes a lot of time. It takes us like 10 hours to edit a 20 minute video. There won't be a lot of driving. I mean, overall, there will be a lot of driving, but mm -hmm. like I said before, it won't be five to seven hours of driving a day. It'll be two to three. That'll give us time to, we can go to a town and go crabbing or enjoy a nice lunch somewhere, or go for a nice hike. Yeah, and I'm also really excited to get back into some things that I just don't have time for right now in the day to day, like reading. I really want to start reading more and then also painting. My dad was a oil painter and he loved painting landscapes. I would love to get into that as well. So yeah, we, we'll stay busy. We will stay busy. <laughs> How long are you going to be gone? Well, it could be six months or it could be six years. We really don't know. And that's kind of exciting, you know? Yeah. We have um, some, you know, plans for the next year, kind of a very loose itinerary of what we're gonna do. And then we'll see where we go from there. Next question. Mm. This kind of goes with the last question. Have you planned out your whole trip? No. Should we tell them where we're going? No, not yet. So we have the next few months planned out. After that, we have a loose idea but nothing is set. We're just kind of gonna, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna follow nice weather. We might follow winter when it comes back around again. Yeah, I'd love to do some snowboarding in the Rockies. I lived in Colorado for a year and would love to get back there and do some snowboarding. But there's so many other areas to explore in the West too. Like so many parts of Arizona, Utah. New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah, so. The possibilities are endless. I'd also love to go over the East Coast one day too. I mean, there's a lot to see over there as well, but we'll see. That's all the questions that we have. If you have any questions for us, please drop them in the comments below. We love to hear from you. You know, we're learning as we go. We are, we've had our van for a year, a little over a year, but we're total newbies at this too. Um, so, or if you have any advice, drop them in the comments. We read every single comment that comes in and respond to it. So we'd love to hear from you. Pretty excited. <laughs> so Brian, Brian and I kind of made a deal that if we get to 100,000 subscribers within the next year, then... <laughs> I get a dirt bike. Brian gets a dirt bike. So if you want... Trail bike. <laughs> if you want his dreams to come true, hit that subscribe button. 100,000, that's a lot. It I is know. a lot. That's, uh, we're not banking on that, but who knows? Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll It'd happen. Be awesome. Or more. We love our YouTube community. Thank you guys for being here. We'll post another video before we leave on all the prep that we're doing uh, and packing and what we're taking. Uh, we're going to leave in three weeks from tomorrow. So <laughs> getting close. But thanks for following along. We really appreciate you guys being here. And we'll see you on the next adventure out there. Bye.